Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 378 of the Daily FIFA Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Shake, 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 yeah. Mm. Get down with your bad selves. I am your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and today is Thursday. May 9th, 2024, and it's a gorgeous day here at the Beaver Lodge, and I'm in a great mood, and I hope you are too. Uh, A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Yes, indeed, Kitsasi, I have some Aurora Borealis going on. (laughs) It seems so indeed. And Mr. Grizzly, how is your mental health today, sir? Um... All things considered, it's pretty good. Uh, I didn't get much sleep last night, and uh, I should be really, like, grumpy, but I'm not. I'm a little tired, of course, because I didn't get a lot of sleep, but uh, had a lovely walk with Lola this evening. She saw squirrels and didn't scream or cry or didn't go haywire to try and chase them. So, yeah, there's there's wow. a, lot of, a lot of growth on her part. Um, good, good, good. We played in the park last night, so... I, Took her, took her for a long walk, then went to Scotch and Cigar Club and, and brought her along, and the boys loved her. And um, a local puppy dog that comes to visit and usually wants to come on, hang out on the, on the porch with us, did not care for the fact that there was a large white female dog on the porch. And he's a, a little French bulldog, and he's just full of energy, and I love him. His name is Fitzgerald. And he did not take too well to some white bitch on his uh, porch as he sees it. <laughs> so um, I brought her I brought her off the porch to say hello to Fitzgerald and he kind of growled and snapped at her so I had to pull her back real fast because I mean literally her bite is bigger than him. Like right. if she if she chomped down she'd bite him in half. So yeah. I pulled her back uh, brought her back up onto the porch and she was calm right away and he was just growling the whole time. So one of my buddies went down and fed Fitzgerald some stuff and, and, uh, yeah, he was not happy about seeing that big white bitch on his porch as as he, uh, I'm sure as he thought. (laughs) Oh my. my. So then, uh, yeah. So then I took her to the park and she ran around for like an hour, like an idiot and tore up her paws from like the, so, you know, she got, so the paws here and then it's the pad that's up higher. I don't know what you call that near the dew claw. And I'll call it a dew pad. I don't know what to call it. And of course, cause when she, dives to get the ball her paws slide out in front of her and it's gravel not well it's like a sandy gravelly Mm -hmm. so she tore up those both of them they were bleeding so i got her home sat her down on the kitchen floor and cleaned her up with polysporin and wrapped her in gauze and she wasn't excited about it but she 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 kept trying to pull her one paw back and i'm like no i have to clean you no i so i wiped it down polysporin and gauzed it both of them then she just went and sat on the couch and fell asleep (laughs) <laughs> so that was my 
my <laughs> evening. How, how about you? How was your evening? Uh, my evening was, um, I listened to some podcasts to find some stuff for the show. I tried to stay up for the hockey, hockey game. game. I got to about uh, five minutes into the third period. And uh, yep, that was it for me. I didn't even make it to the first period. My night was very calm. My beaver sweetie went to play volleyball with some friends, so it was just me at home alone. And mm. and yes, uh, which was which was fine. Um, uh, Kit Michael, <laughs> hey Douglas, the Hades called and they want their polo shirt back. That's hey, funny. hey. That's funny. I like it. And just in case I have to like go evil all of a sudden, then I could just like, all right. <laughs> um, uh, more slow news days, interestingly enough. Yeah, um, the only thing it's, I thought is really Rachel Thomas being a, uh, a, yeah. a what? A, a Stepford wife? I don't know what you want to call her in this scene, but have you seen this clip? Uh, I've seen the tweet, had not watched it with the sound on yet. <laughs> well, just bear with me here. It's, it's much sound to hear. Because quite frankly, she doesn't. Okay, so that because we're running a new version of the software today, um, yes, it, it, it seems to want to just automatically play stuff, and I didn't want it to load that up right away. So yeah. let me see if I can make that change. No, it doesn't seem to. Doesn't seem to give me the ability to change that. All right. <laughs> so because <laughs> I don't want you know I want to be able to have that in 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 reserve, and then anyway. I don't want it to load immediately, and it does. So I don't know what to do about that. But let's—I'll well, just play this clip. It's 29 seconds. Watch this. What is the concern? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why do you not want to answer that question? Is it because you think it should close too? Because your leader has said he wants to remain it open. I stand with my leader. Je peux assurer tous les Canadiens et Canadiens que la diffusion en français ne sera pas affectée. C'est une priorité pour nous. Do you think Radio Canada should stay open? You don't want to answer? Sorry, I'm having uh, having complications with the new software here. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, by the way, Kits, yes, thank you for your patience in joining us. Uh, for some reason, uh, when I went to boot in, um, I got that. Sp- spinning wheel of eternal just sit there and wait so i had to do it a second time and then uh, yes uh, we uh, got into restream and uh, everything was different and i i don't i didn't receive an email saying everything was updating so it was kind of a surprise um yeah so things are weird uh, so yeah that was uh, rachel thomas um rachel thomas of being the person who got ejected out of the House of Commons before Padiev did on the day of the stunt, by the way. That's right. So uh, she's not new to this type of thing. No. Uh, Rachel Thomas of the, um, oh, could you please answer the question in English? Yes, her. When there's simultaneous interpretation there and all she needs to do is put this thing in her ear, right? Um, yeah, her. Uh, she was asked whether or not Radio Canada in French should remain open because Pierre Pardiev has uh, said he can't wait to sell off the CBC, particularly the one in Toronto, and then make housing out of it. Um, but of course, if you close down the CBC, that means you close down Société Radio Canada as well, because mm-hmm. they also can't have one from coast to coast to coast and uh, and around well, the world. Yes, and uh, well, they need all the infrastructure, the national infrastructure that CBC has to do mm-hmm. that. So, uh, when you say well, you will shut down CBC, do you mean CBC and Société Radio Canada, or just CBC English? And if you do that, well, if he says just CBC English, then he says, well, then what cost savings are you going to make, really? Because you have to maintain all the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. But now for seven or eight or nine million Canadians versus forty-one, yeah. And Cassie's right about this. She did ask pertinent questions uh, of the CBC president in committee. Yes. I agree with you, Cassie, completely, 100%. And and I am still angry at the president of the CBC saying, well, we'll take a look at the uh, Christmas bonuses for 
you don't get a bonus. You just fired 600 people. There are no bonuses when you fire people. You fire people because you're saving money. You get no bonus. Also, why are they getting bonuses? Why? They're executives. They're incredibly well paid for by a, it's a crown corp. Yeah, that's probably a competition with the private sector thing. I guess. I would assume attracting the best talent thing. But uh, there's been a lot of information, disinformation. I don't really know where they stand, but the conservatives at one point during the week were saying, oh my God, when she was here last time, she said she didn't know about the bonuses, and it turns out they had gone through the whole time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how true that is. I haven't gotten in, in gone deep in that because I've seen articles after that uh, stating that the bonuses are still up, are indeed still up in the air and exactly. have not actually been paid and actually hasn't been decided. But uh, yeah, she was asked point blank whether or not she thinks it should remain open and she can't say yes and she can't say no. Because as, as I mentioned, if she says yes, well then she goes against her leader. If she says no, well yeah. then you get into the cost argument. Then why would you, I mean, you, you say you're going to save money and you could, but how are you going to do that really? So um, all she can end up doing at the end is saying, I stand with my leader. Let, let's let's just watch the whole clip. This is the this is it's it's not long. It's like twenty seconds. But do you think Radio Canada should stay open? You don't want to answer. What, what is the concern? So, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why do you not want to answer that question? Is it because you think it should close too? Because your leader has said he wants to remain it open. I stand with my leader. Okay. So, do you think Radio Canada should look. stay open? Mm -hmm. You don't want to answer? Not a good look. Not a good look. And and then this also we're, we're finding out, I guess, I'm guessing he said it, maybe in French somewhere, but he, Pierre Poliev did say he wants Radio Canada to stay open. So right. now he has to explain because he's not saying the same thing in English as he's saying in French there, obviously. Mm -hmm. So um, now we get to ask, hopefully media will start asking Pierre Poliev, um, why do... Francophone Canadians get to have a CBC, but Anglophones do not. Yeah. Yeah. You know when I talked about Tom Mulcair a while ago in his election, having sown the seeds prior to election day and prior to the campaign that will make them fall apart? Mm -hmm. This is one. This is one. This is an issue that will keep coming back. Oh, yeah. Particularly during an election because there is going to be a francophone debate and if Skippy decides not to skip the debates, this, the question of CBC and Radio Canada is going to come up in there in that debate. And then you have Trudeau in French when he's best. You have Blanchet. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't give who has no f's to give None, about zero. how putty ends up when that debate is done you got may who also has no f's to give about how putty looks when that debate is done doesn't care <laughs> and you got him trying to explain how it is that it's in any way remotely financially or socially or equitably consistent to keep Radio Canada open, but not CBC. Well, Have fun with that. Yeah, let us know how it works out. Yeah, yeah indeed, indeed. Let us know um, how it works out. I have another thing for you here. Okay. Uh, this is really good. It's it's about Arnold Viersen. And, and there's a breakdown. Remember when he said Canadians from across the country mm -hmm. signed this petition? If you yeah. haven't seen this, I posted this yesterday. Uh, here we are. I posted this yesterday. I'll show. I'll, I'll share it. We'll we'll interrupt it a couple of times because it's a it's about five minutes long. But have a look at this. Yeah, I figured. It would I want to talk this. about Arnold Vierson, who is the gentleman who brought forward the anti-abortion petition today in the House of Commons. You can find this petition in the bowels of our Commons. It's definitely there. It's right here from today. Here's the exact petition and what it said. Pause to read. Do you want to take any guesses on how many people actually signed the petition? 47. 
47 people signed it. 47 people. So let's start a petition. Signed the petition. And let's see. He says nearly 100,000 abortions are performed annually in Canada. It basically, he, he read the petition in the House of Commons. Yeah. 47 people signed it. Except he added preborn throughout it. Correct. Which is not in the text of the petition. No, but this is where it gets interesting. Any yes. people actually sign the petition? 47. 47 people signed it. So let's circle back and talk about our friend Arnold. So Arnold was actually born in Barhead, Alberta, and then raised in Nearlandia, which is a small community outside of Barhead in northern Alberta. He attended the Covenant Canadian Reformed School, which, yes, is super, super religious from grades 1 to grade 12. He then attended Nate in Edmonton, where he got his auto mechanic certification. And he also has a degree in business from the Fraser Valley University. Okay, so... He was a working man. Full mm -hmm. credit. Full credit. Yeah. Full credit. University, and then he returned to Nearlandia in Westlock County, where he lives today with his wife and their seven children. He was first elected as an MP in 2015, and in that time, he's brought forward three bills, none of which have passed. There's the Stopping Internet Sexual Exploitation Act, which honestly, in this act, there is a good idea that puts the onus of proof of age on those who are distributing the material, not mm -hmm. on those who are starring in it. And mm -hmm. I do actually think that that's a good idea. Yep. But pretty much the rest of this bill is a no for me. There's the National Strategy to Combat Human Trafficking. This is literally the plot of Sound and Freedom. This guy loves that movie. Like, he for sure bought extra tickets. And then there's the Bringing Home Justice for Victims of Serious Crime. Just absolutely loves the prison complex of the United States and wants to see that in Canada. You may also remember Arnold as the guy who asked a fellow coworker if she had ever considered SW because he was annoyed with her questioning of Stephen Harper's actions to make SW more illegal in Canada and prevent SWs from hiring security or being in a singular location and really like vilifying them and prosecuting them. If you're listening to the audio version of this only, SW means sex work for those who may not know. And mm -hmm. his response to that was, well, have you ever considered doing SW? Here's the literal quote. I would just respond to that by asking the honorable member across the way if it's an area of work that she has ever considered and if it's inappropriate. And then he immediately got cut off. And instead of stopping, he used the pushback from people saying that what he was saying was inappropriate as justification to say, Mr. Speaker, I think this makes the point. I do not think any woman in this country ever chooses this as a job. And remember how I said he absolutely loves the movie Sound and Freedom? He's the guy who let all the Save the Children protesters into the Capitol. And then they were immediately kicked out when the press was like, what's going on? Now let's talk about this really fun article that he is quoted in where he explains that God has told him to get into politics and that how he actually became political was... Every time I hear somebody say god told me to do this please seek help i mean that please, please seek medical help because if god is talking to you and you're hearing him in your head you might have a mental health challenge you're unaware of and that has nothing to do with people's faith nothing to do with people's religion understand that my mom is a deeply religious catholic woman who goes to church religiously, pardon the pun, every Sunday. I respect that. But God has never talked to her. So if God is telling you to get into politics or organize a freedom convoy, you need to seek medical professional help. He became political was by joining the ARPA, which is a Jesus lobbyist. Like, that's... It, it's a it's how to get more religion into politics even though they have a part of their website being like but we should really separate pop politics from the bible but jesus is the only truth we have to listen to 
They literally spell it out on their website. The mission of ARPA Canada is to educate, equip, and encourage reformed Christians to political action and to bring a biblical perspective to our civil authorities. What does ARPA do exactly? Here's how they do that. My personal favorite is provide information and support to elected officials in their difficult tasks of governing our provinces and nation. Uh, they intervene at all levels of court and write for publications like the Supreme Court Law Review and major Canadian newspapers and much more. Wow. And th This is alarming. This is really alarming. You need to understand, folks, that these are people who want to bring their religion into our House of Commons and make it the law of the land. And I know I've been going on about this the last couple of days, how they get into it via school board trustee positions and start to change their local municipality and then slowly go from there. This is all very frightening. These are dominionists who want Gilead. If you think The Handmaid's Tale is a work of fiction, do I have some news for you. And they're the ones who started this, like, pre-born thing? This is, this is them. This is, this is their language. But circling back to the interview that he did, it just goes on and on about how much no one understands Alberta. He loves guns, God, and protecting the pre-born. It's everything you expect it to be. But I really want to highlight something. Before I, before I show you this last quote, I just want to remind you of this and tell you that he is currently 38 years old. He got into politics in 2015 when he was 28 years old. He spent his entire life living in a small town. He left that small town to get some education in Edmonton and then returned back to that small town and then got into politics in 2015. It's very important. Are you ready? Here it is. My final question would be, how do your Christian convictions come into play in everyday life on the Hill as an MP? Arnold said, being a Christian on Parliament Hill is a luxury. It gives me a solid worldview. Um, that's my reaction. <laughs> the, the googly eyed, what, solid worldview is a, what? I'm, what? <laughs> A launching pad from which to launch from for the issues I work on. It allows me to see issues clearly, having a solid worldview. Being a Christian on the Hill also sometimes pigeonholes. People see you coming, which is an advantage as well. People generally, because they know I'm a Christian, they think I'm going to think in a particular way, which often I do. I can't. I can't. Right. Like, I mean, my goodness gracious. Uh, that was a good one, though, right? That was a good yep. one? Yep, yep. Pretty uh, good. This, this young lady who I follow on TikTok, uh, Kitty Knits, or sorry, Nitty Knits, Nitty Knits. I'll, I'll put a link in here if anybody wants to uh, have a look at that. You can, you can check it out on the TikTok. Uh, young woman uh, who does a very good job of breaking things down. Did the background work, looked into it. I'm like, yeah, we salute you, ma'am. See if I'm going to reach out to her and see if she'd like to come on the show and have a chat with us because she did the research. Thank you for that. We were able to break it down without my stumbling, bumbling manners, which I normally do when I trip over my tongue. She broke it down really well. She did the background research and called him out. And, and, and she didn't misquote. She told you the truth. And everything was mostly his words. <laughs> Being a Christian gives me a good world view. You've been to Edmonton, Ottawa, and Nearlandia. Right. That's a world view. Wow. 47 people signed that petition. 47. Hmm. Look, I would hope he'd been to a few more places since being elected. One would hope. Maybe he has. I, I don't know. I've not looked at his travel itinerary. But, and again, let, let, let's go back to the basic tenet of stop trying to govern women's bodies. Stop doing that. 
stuff. And, and I said it yesterday. I'll say it again today. You can be anti-abortion and pro-choice. You can be those two things. You really can. Anti-abortion. You don't want to have an abortion. You don't believe in them. Don't get one. Don't tell somebody else how to live their life or mm-hmm. what to do with their body. But it's not a child. It's a choice. It's not a choice. It's a child. But it's not a child. It's not. It's a fetus that can't survive outside of the womb at that, at that age. We all know this. And, and again, you can be anti-abortion and pro-choice. It's not impossible. So many people have said to me, well, you're pro-choice, you're for abortion. I've never said that. I've never said that. I said I'm pro-choice, which means that woman has the ability and the legal right to make that choice. When you start to govern women's bodies, like I said, first it's no abortions, then it's no contraception, then it's no same-sex marriage, then they outlaw uh, homosexuality, they're already come for the trans community. And, and what's next? Oh, tattoos. You can't tattoo your body. You have to live by the rules we lay, we lay out for you. Mm-hmm. Indeed. I like uh, Kit James here saying, uh, if you invoke God in civics and in governance, you should have to subpoena God to testify. If God doesn't show up, you lose the right to invoke said God. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. I can't, I can't disagree with that at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. What else uh, do we have today? Uh, yes, I see uh, the comment here in, uh, in the, the chat, Elizabeth May and NATO. Um, I saw it. Didn't have time to look into it, so I don't really have anything much to say about it. But from what I can tell, is she introduced something or said something about Canada needing to withdraw from NATO. Um, yeah. <laughs> th- that kind of comes like completely out of the left field. Blue. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that that was a green party position. Maybe it wasn't there all, all along and never, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but yes, I saw that very quickly and, uh, it was like, uh, yeah, what, what, what's that? So yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'll have to look into that at Kit Tabby G. Uh, but, uh, I hadn't before today. So unfortunately I can't really speak to it. Um, little tidbit, uh, that, uh, we may not, have known uh, with regard to the um, sp- high speed chase that went the wrong way mm. 401. It seems that there is a dash cam video that has come out that shows about 17, at least 17 patrol vehicles involved in the chase. I guess 10 of them were on one side of the highway going the right way, but seven of them had followed the U-Haul van going the wrong way down the highway. Going the wrong way down the highway. Allegedly, this is after receiving instruction to stand down. I'm not sure. Nobody is confirming the moment when they were told to stand down. I am guessing again, I have to suppose that it is because it does not make them look good because if it did, I have a feeling they would be out there with that information. Mm. Yes. Unless there's another reason legally, because clearly there's more investigations that have probably been launched, um, that that type of information could not be put out in the public at this time uh, in order to uh, provide some clarity. But yeah, that is um, seven cars. Yeah. Followed. Like, I'm sitting there, right? These things are discouraged to begin with. A U Haul truck goes the wrong way down the highway. Allegedly, they are told to stand down before this happens. One goes anyway. 
And so does another. And another. Mm-hmm. Another. And another and another and another. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Much as there's one guy in this nation that wants to make what happened as a result of all of this the fault of the prime minister, uh, uh, this is becoming uh, a story about judgment. Well, I would think so anyway. Thereof. And once again, um, seeming to be a story of lack of judgment of uh, our leader of the opposition, because just like when that car went boom on the other side of the border, he was first to rush out and assume that it had something to do with terrorism, that the prime minister had done something wrong. Uh, when this came out, uh, this was all because the prime minister's bail stuff had to happen. And it seems that uh, this guy was out on bail for nothing. There's nothing in the 2015 law that the prime minister changed that would have changed what happened to him. So pre-2015 law or post-2015 law, he still probably would have gotten the bail that he got. So it had nothing to do with that. And there's like all these decision points along the way. Mm-hmm. It's like he pulled a knife out of it. Just, it seems to be that there's this, you know, you did something to a cop, whether undercover, well, in both cases, both cases, you know, undercover. Well, undercover. One was off duty. In this case, the cop was off duty when the knife was pulled on him at the liquor store. And in the case of Umar Zamir, they were either undercover, either undercover clothes or plain clothes and didn't identify themselves. But um, it seems that if something a cop is either threatened or hurt or killed even accidentally someone must pay i don't know if there's this, this some code it's like oh it's like you pulled a knife well you pulled a knife on anyone that should be bad yes but you pulled a knife on a cop off duty well i mean the guy as terrible as he is because probably didn't know it was a cop when he was pulling the knife because it was off duty. And I'm just sitting there and it's like, yes, but it was a cop. It was one of ours. So therefore, he must pay. I, that, again, I can't understand yeah. what type what could have gone down. For First of all, that undercover, that off duty cop to pursue himself in his own vehicle mm-hmm. until the 17 others arrived. And then it's like, uh, wasn't his what? family with him? I had heard the rumor that his family was with him in his vehicle. The I don't cop, know if that's true. Yes. I, I haven't heard anything to that effect, but that's possible. But that's what I'm trying to wonder. It's like, what is it that would have made this person have this reaction that phoning it in wasn't enough that they had, even though they were off duty, they had to pursue. And then for 17 other cars to follow. And then for seven of those drivers to decide that going the wrong way down the highway also was a smart I did yeah something must have happened to set people up because this is just a whole series of terrible judgments especially if they were told to stand down and they did it anyway these are choices Now, maybe not thinking straight choices, but these are choices. Somewhere, something, something happened somewhere along the way where somebody said, yep, that's it, and they ran on that, and they made all the series of choices based on that. This is not, uh, there's way more to look into here oh, yes. than they all. So, but once again, we had a leader of the opposition that was a uh, quick to see a tragic incident, uh, attribute intent, attribute motive, attribute whatever, start flapping his gums and um, not aging well. Not aging well whatsoever. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't like this exploiting the misery or exploiting the hardship of others or exploiting tragedy. So it has a very ambulance chaser feel to it. 
something happened mm -hmm. in the country or somebody died or somebody got hurt. Does it involve someone who was on bail? Okay, yeah, let's go. It's just, uh, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. There's, there's something that's... The politician that takes, that guarantees that they take two to five minutes a day to point at someone and tell you this is who you need to hate today. That just, there's something about that that just rubs me the wrong way. That just screams to me, don't vote for me. Well, it just screams. You know, when you go to a party like this and you're, you know, you're having a conversation, you're two or three or four in a circle, and then somebody comes in and joins the circle and they immediately start talking about something negative. Why? It's a party. Why did you just come into a circle of like, five people who are having a great conversation, just like, let, let's discuss something negative. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, you just, I'm going to talk to you about who you should hate today or who you should blame for your problems today or you should, this terrible thing happened, you know? This is this, let's, let's talk about how it's this one guy's fault. I'm just, mm -hmm, uh, 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 uh. There's um, my scientific term. There's an ick to it. There's an ick. I feel it on my skin. There's an ick to it. You just don't. You don't. You don't do that. You well, I think this is uh, it, it, saucy sea witch uh, Rhiannon. It was a vengeful chase by officers who felt disrespected after the whole Zamir incident. This should show police are too excited for punishment. It, uh, <sighs> Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Fortunately uh, for Mr. Zamir, um, Canadians have uh, heard what it is uh, that's happened to him, and they've donated over three hundred thousand dollars in a GoFundMe mm -hmm. to help him. So, and he says he's overwhelmed by the support. So, uh, again, we're talking about all these stories. We're talking about a brown man that could have been railroaded, and we talked about people that potentially committed perjury to send him there, and then we're talking about you know other incidents. But again. If you pay attention, peace, kindness, good people. Never forget, they're always part of the story as well. Oh, yes. They're always part of the story as well. So uh, people saw injustice and people are doing right. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, with regard to... Um, the arrest of the three people uh, in Edmonton, the three Indian nationals, uh, for the uh, plot, uh, what is alleged to be a plot, mm -hmm. uh, to assassinate Hardeep Singh uh, Nijar. Um, it's important that I was listening to some broadcasts and uh, so there was an important note made uh, that I want to, uh, that I thought I should bring to the kits. And that is that it's, the RCMP has still, the RCMP itself has still not formally made the connection that the government of India is connected to the assassination. That's still a matter of intel, uh, matter of um, stuff that we saw in the court filing of the United States, because it seems that the people involved in both plots are connected or related, or in some cases maybe even the same. Um, so in terms of those dots being connected, it's being made more by the intelligence and what we're finding out. But the RCMP investigative wise has not said anything publicly that says, yes, the government of India is connected. So I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, uh, clear. Um, but news has come out uh, about how in Australia in 2020, in Canberra, um, at the capital, uh, two Indian spies were expelled then before trying to steal secrets. And that Mike, Burs Mike Burgess, who's the head of the main domestic intelligence AG agency in Australia, is quoted as saying, we confronted the foreign spies and quietly and professionally removed them from our country. And I'm not going to name who it was at the time. Uh, and it seems that everybody was uh, okay with that um, because India and Australia have... Um, 
very close security ties and they have a very uh, good trade relationship which has been increasing in value and so they're not litigating in this in public they were you know doing this behind closed doors like our prime minister was trying to do um, but he was rebuffed and then he had to go public um, but now several Australian media outlets and the Washington Post as well are identifying India as the guilty party in this case for what happened in Australia. And uh, the Washington Post's international investigative correspondent Greg Miller is saying, quote, they were cultivating sources within police departments, trying to gather information on sensitive security arrangements at airports. They were monitoring the Indian Sikh population in Australia. Mm. Mm. And uh, Priya Cheko uh, studies this and, and uh, is uh, posted with the, the University of Adelaide, says there's been an increasing trend in Indian foreign policy toward the use of transnational repression against diaspora groups that are seen as dissidents and a threat to Narendra Modi's government. So, um, yeah, it looks like... <sighs> With through drips and drops, more nations and uh, media outlets and players are uh, wanting to add corroboration to the story to make it such that the government of India's claims uh, are not entirely unchallenged. It, it, it would seem that given the number of players that are putting information out there, that would suggest the government of India's guilt should be a sign that maybe there is um, a number or two to go along with the spoke. Let's put it in those types of terms. Uh, again, no formal official connection, but you know, governments and media outlets, you know, court cases. When you, at some point, for some people, when they've said, gee, isn't that a coincidence? Too many times they come to the conclusion that all these coincidences are not coincidences. That's about as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to choose your words judiciously and carefully. Um, this would be such an occasion because you don't want to be the first one to rush out with a bad take. But right now, it's not looking good. All right, so stay tuned. There's going to be more of this uh, to come, particularly if we start to get more information about, uh, given that the, the government of India seems to want to make a big deal of pushing back against Canada because uh, with the court case in the United States, apparently the United States is saying that India is uh, quite co cooperating relatively well with them on that case, but while they're pushing back publicly against Canada. Can you tell there's an election? Mm -hmm. Just saying. Because again, what are we going to do? Show up with our battalion of lacrosse and curling brooms? Lacrosse sticks and curling brooms? The United States, however, well, they have more levers they can pull. So seems that the government of India is a little more inclined to cooperate so long as maybe things could be kept quiet. But we have no such leverage. So, yeah, once again, it's, it, it's, it, all of this is very similar to the whole Meng Wanzhou in China thing. The allegation, and, you know, the big public denouncement and we're meddling, you're meddling in our affairs and trying to make us pay somehow and punching punching us publicly like this while, you know, so, oh, yes, yes, United States, yes, yes, we'll, we'll do, yes, yes, we, we, we can come to some face-saving arrangement. Okay, Canada, boom, boom. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there, there's some similar playbooks here. It's not, it's not all constant, um, 
but it seems that there's a playbook. It seems that there's a playbook. All right. Um, with regard to the campus protests, it seems that there is a justice committee in the House of Commons that will be studying anti-Semitism over the next few days, and uh, they will have some students come in to testify. Um, there are Jewish students on campus who are claiming that, for example, um, they don't feel safe to the point that they've they're not wearing kippahs anymore, but baseball caps rather to keep their heads covered so that they can't be identified as being members of the Jewish faith. Uh, they are claiming that their institutions have not done enough to make them, make them feel safe or to provide a safe learning environment. Uh, and um, the movement, uh, which was seen to be more U.S.-based at the start and now spreading to Canada, is also now spreading to Europe. Uh, with UK uh, Prime Minister Richie Sunak calling for an end to anti-Semitic abuse at campus protests there as well. So this uh, movement seems to be going global. And I heard an interesting theory here. Um, and the interest of the theory is that these protests are actually helping the right win elections and will help the right win elections rather than the left. Because... Given that the face of these protests are students, you get the good old-fashioned intergenerational trope of older adults who are having their lives disrupted somehow, um, maybe being admiring the pluckiness of youth, but uh, feeling that they're just a little misguided, that the real world's a little more complicated. And I'm looking at myself because I remember we were having a bit of this conversation the other day. Mm -hmm. um, but once this starts to be some violence, then um, people that sort of don't care one way or the other or say, you know, I'm okay with protests, but only so far, um, start to see things get out of hand and start wanting uh, maybe a little order. Mm. And which are the parties that are promising order? Well, so, so, but it's just the people who are protesting in this way probably are not going to get what they want if a right wing government is elected. And again, when we say about tactics and methods, they might be employing methods that make it seem to the general public that there's a state of disorder. And if that is the impression that the general public is getting, then maybe again, the issue no longer becomes Israel-Palestine genocide or not. Do we do right by fellow human beings or not? And uh, how do we maintain or how do we get back to some order? And if the issue changes from one to the second, the former to the latter, then it seems to be once again that the methods maybe ultimately led to a destination that gets you the exact opposite of what it is you're actually fighting for. It was an interesting theory. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how true it is, but I can see it. I can see it happening. I could see that happening as a. Uh, that's why again. That, that's why I say you have to be absolutely, 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 absolutely sure. That if this is a moment and this is a cause for which you must break the rules, because again, you know, all protests should be nonviolent, but we do realize clearly sometimes that does happen, and sometimes it is effective. I don't recommend it. But if you're going to do that, it has to be at an extremely judicious moment and it has to be fully aware of what the consequences of that are going to be mm -hmm. and what it is you are asking people to do and put on the line. It's not a day one thing. No, no. Right? So, uh, if you are going to break the rules, if you are going to get to good trouble, 
if you're going to, um, that can't be standard operating procedure because then it can't be something that you just decide on a whim. And so, yeah, this is a, you're fighting, we mentioned it before, it's a battle for persuasion, right? And, you know, there's the people immediately in your area, in your vicinity, and the people that are in your face who are most, most opposed to you. But all of that is happening, you know, in a bath of some kind of the general public. And that movement, we learned it with the convoy. It only goes so far. Mm -hmm. Like some public, some people wanted it shut down before it started. Some people said, oh, yeah, let's give them a few days, see what it's like. Some people were okay with one week, but then it was enough. Some people were okay after two weeks. So, but the longer it went, the more they lost people. Oh, yes. Even people that were willing to entertain at one point, they said, oh, come on, it's been three weeks now like this. And there's still honking. Enough. Like, that's enough of the nuts. Right. So, and then we got to a position where the majority of the public, according to polls, even though we found out that there were a couple of things that might, it might have been done, not in the most constitutional way. Yes. That the majority, overwhelming majority of the Canadian public said, yeah, but still it was justified and it needed to be done. Because they lost, the, they lost whatever sympathy they would have gotten on the actual merits and cause they lost with the tactics mm. this could be going on here now in canada fortunately our encampments have been way more peaceful than the ones in the united states but there have been incidents and for example in ottawa the mayor the other day uh, canceled an event mm-hmm that was going to honor, uh, I think it was uh, Independence Day in Israel, where there was going to be a whole ceremony and the raising of the Israeli flag and whatnot. And the raising of the flag is still happening, but that's it, nothing else. And it says, well, you know, we have to do it for safety, but then the question is, okay, but in a situation like this, do you cancel an event to provide safety? Yes, or do you send the message that we do still get to honor the Independence Day yes, by hiring the security that is necessary to allow members of the Jewish community and their friends, their allies, to show up and celebrate and mark that event in public. A lot of people are safe thinking that the mayor of Ottawa made the wrong decision here. Mm -hmm. Well. But it's a legitimate question. Yeah, no, no, no definitely. How do you provide the safety by canceling the event or by you know, spending what is needed to make the event safe as best as you can and holding it, which becomes an act of defiance in some way. You have to, um, yes, but uh, get a, uh, Good question here. So looking forward to Gaza Independence Day, someone said, yeah. And you know what? If there was one, that question would arise and it would be the exact same questions. Mm -hmm. Do we cancel the event for the people that wanted to attend it to be safe? Or do we spend what is needed? And the thing is, is that if we keep canceling events, then we have none. Yeah. Is that what we want? You know, it's, sometimes it's not just as simple as, oh, they raised the flag, they held the event, like this. when you think about it down, you game it out. Where does this lead? These are important questions. They're not trivial. They're not trivial matters. All right. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. We do indeed. All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. <laughs> Pardon me. Excuse me. No worries. It happens. We have a frog <laughs> in our throat from time to time. 
Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And Mr. Grizzly, right under my chin, has put the QR code that links you to our merch store at Etsy. I guess that's Etsy.com? Uh, yes, I do have. I'll put the uh, link here. You can see it now scrolling across there we go. the bottom of the screen. Etsy.com slash CA slash shop slash TNEB merch store. There you go. But uh, the, I think the QR code will be a little easier. <laughs> well, if anybody's watching, but for the for the listeners, it's Etsy.com slash CA slash shop yes. slash TNEB merch store. There you go. True North Ever Beaver. Beaver. E beaver? What's a beaver? True North Eager Beaver. <laughs> I, I, I put eager and beaver together and came up with beaver. Woo. And I see that someone scanned the QR code. Thank you so much, whoever did. Uh, if you would like to not miss an episode, you do not have to. Thank you so much to the Ray Girl for sponsoring our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, if you go there and click on subscribe, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you. And I'm sure Mr. Grizzly will put the QR code up for that Just anytime soon. And oh, two viewers scan the QR code. Well, hey, no, hey, 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 put, hey. Should I put it back? I'll put it back. I'll leave it up there for a moment or two. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, if you would like to support us in other ways, then you need to make like Kit Elaine. Yes, have a beyond awesome day, everyone. And remember to smash the button before you leave, Kit Elaine says. So, yes, go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page and click like, share, subscribe. We love it when you do that. It makes us so happy. <laughs> and there we go. There's a QR code for our pod page. And someone else scanned the QR code. My God, there's lots of scanning today. This is I lovely. Like this. Thank you. Like this Thank you, kids and cuz. We love it. And finally, if you would like to help us out in other ways, the QR code that's by Mr. Grizzly's lovely dome brings you to the emergency hydration fund or our tip jar here at the Beaver Lodge. If you like our show, you would like to encourage us to do more. Um, then if you have a, a little bit of money in your pocket uh, and you would like to donate that to us to help us uh, produce and market and do all the research and all that kind of stuff, pay our internet fees so that uh, we can bring you the show, we would be very, very grateful. Of course, the gift of your attention is the gift we cherish the most. So if you would like to contact us, TrueNorthEagerBeaver at gmail.com is where you can write us or at TrueEager on our Twitter feed, TrueNorthEagerBeaver on Facebook. If you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, please stars and reviews or leave us some comments here on our YouTube page. We uh, try to read everything, so uh, we appreciate it very, 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 very much. Oh, another scan of the QR code. Oh, my word. Jeez, get some gubs. My river runneth over. <laughs> um, all right. So that's all the information in order to be able to support us because democracy is something that you do. Please get involved in the Alberta NDP leadership race or if you're in Saskatchewan or in New Brunswick, how about uh, volunteering at a polling station this coming election? Got to let people know that you're interested because there's a little bit of training that happens before that and you want to get on the list. So uh, look into that. And of course, uh, if you happen to uh, have some spare time and uh, you don't like what's going on in your community or you're starting to get a little worried, why not consider running for something? School board trustee? Mm -hmm. City councilor? If not you, who? Well, yes, indeed. Right? You might be the one you've been waiting for. Mr. Grizzly. Do you have some words of wisdom, please? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, bereft of ideas and thoughts this morning because I'm just really tired. <laughs> that's, that's why the title of the show is More Coffee. I didn't get much sleep last night. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm completely burnt out. Uh, my words of wisdom, just uh, have the best day you can. That's my words of wisdom. Be kind and smile and be as happy as possible because we don't know when our days are up. That's all I got this morning. All right. It could be a tough word out there, kids, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, cue the cock. 
You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. <laughs> That's all well, nice to see you. Oh, by the way, Mr. Grizzly, because yeah. you have Miss Lola, did you happen to know that it is National Pet Week? I did not know. I think it's also Mental Health Week, too. It is indeed Mental Health Week. Absolutely. So you can so go and check go. out my uh, Monday evening's ASMR to check that out if you want to talk about mental health. I have the clip of the stunning statement from Elizabeth May. All right. Do you want to watch it? Yes, please. Stunning statement. I don't understand this at all. Sandwich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This petition from residents of Sandwich Gulf Islands and beyond is concerns oh. the Canada's engagement with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, otherwise known more um, familiarly as NATO. The petitioners point out the Minister of National Defense's primary responsibility is to protect Canada within its borders and that the Minister of National Defense is not mandated to engage in wars in other countries or make treaties that encroach on other territories of other sovereign states. Uh, the petitioners uh, uh, make the point that the Canadian military does in fact participate in invasions in other countries by being a partner in NATO. They call on the House of Commons to immediately withdraw all connection, cooperation and material support uh, from NATO, from Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Presenting okay. the petitions, President House of Petition, the Honourable Member for Senate Gulf Islands. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This yeah. petition. So, so that makes sense now to me. It's, it's she is not. No, it's saying not that her. It's the Green Party position. She it's, is. So, yeah. so, but th these are things. Uh, uh, people send in petitions, and if you're an MP and if you're doing your job correctly, mm -hmm. you don't sift through the petitions to decide those you will read and those you don't, depending on what you agree to Correct. represent your constituents. So if you have a petition that has enough, you do your duty, you stand up, you put it on the record in the House of Commons that you received it and you read it in. So It, it makes um, sense now. When I was first told about it, I was like, what? Yeah. She's so it's not reading. a Green Party position, and it's not a personal position, it's whatnot. She's just simply reading in her constituents she's doing her job she's doing her job all right i'm ready yeah probably just like the abortion petition yeah exactly in, in this case yeah they don't they they don't have to be put you're supposed to represent the views of all your constituents mm -hmm. yes even the unpopular ones even the unpopular ones all right yeah. all right. 